This is the moment of truth. He's gonna let go. Growing up in Wyoming, I got pretty good at having fun in the snow, seeing as how it's on the ground for about eight months of the year, every year. When I was in high school, I built an igloo in my yard just about every winter, and igloo building quickly became a huge passion of mine. Ever since then, I wanted to build an igloo right in front of the Grand Tetons, which would probably be the most picturesque igloo scene imaginable. My friend Isaac agreed to help, and after a quick stop by Staples to grab the bins that we'd use as molds, we headed out into the Grand Tetons to begin building the most beautiful igloo ever. This right here is Jackson Lake Dam, and we're gonna go build it right about there. Oh. We're gonna look so cringe to these ice fishers out here. So I think we found our spot right here. Um, this is a good spot because the Grand Teton is about right there, and this will make for a good shot of it. <laughs> Alright, so this is the middle, and I'm six foot three, so if I plop my booty right oh, there, boom, that's one edge of the igloo. Boom, that's the <laughs> other edge of the igloo. Alright, so we're gonna go right here to right over there. Alright. And that's our igloo. So we're just gonna build right around that ring and it's about six feet. So hopefully that should be good. So what we're doing now, we're taking all the snow from there. We're gonna start building blocks around this foundation, around the circle. And that's a really, really important step because it kind of sets the foundation for the whole structure. And uh, if we get that right, it's, it's hard to, to fail. All right, we're putting the first block on the circle. There you go. Nice. Hello, I like a glove. You just gonna keep filming or are you, you gonna help me? Come on, man, let's get to work. But we are all done with this entire first layer of bricks right here. What we need to make next is what I call the minefield of bricks. We have three here right now, and we need to just line up a ton more bricks in rows, and then they'll harden overnight. We'll come here tomorrow, and then scoop them up with a shovel or machete, and put them on top of the main igloo, and spiral it up. So. How are we gonna scoop them up with a machete? What are we, a hibachi chef? The next thing we need to figure out is how many bricks we need to make to put in the brick minefield. And to do that, we need to figure out how many are in this, and that is 17. I'm a really fast counter. Let's just say that for every 20 bricks we make, we're gonna have three fall apart or not work. So that's about 20 per layer. And sure, we're gonna get fewer as we go up, but I like to account for too many bricks rather than too few bricks. So let's see how many layers we're gonna need. So we're gonna need about one, two, <laughs> Three. Let's just say four more layers. So four times 20, that's 80. So let's make 80 bricks. All right, Lit. let's go. We are all done with our first 21 bricks. 21 because Isaac is stupid and put number 11 right here instead of starting a new row of 10. Dude, you look like some kind of like LA urban filmmaker dude who like wears ripped black jeans, bounces between Bali and Venice Beach, and skydives with Sam Colder on the weekends. That brick right there is number 40, and that means we're halfway there. Oh, 
Oh dude, the Tetons are starting to come out. So let's throw a time lapse up for the people. This is Isaac bringing the very last brick of the day. Number 80, let's go. And that, people, is 80 igloo bricks. So we're gonna let all these igloo bricks sit overnight and then we're gonna come back in the morning and assemble them into one awesome igloo. We will see you in La Manana. We are back here at the Jackson Lake Dam today and honestly my biggest concern is that somebody messed up the blocks or something. They are there and we are all good. You look ready to go do a draw at high noon at the town square. How'd you know about that? Nice. Today we actually have some Teton visibility and you can see that the igloo right there is in prime position. Looks like all of our bricks survived the night, so that's good. <laughs> what are you doing? Talking to the ravens, they just flew by. They're super intelligent, we're communicating. So last night, all these blocks froze solid. They are very hard, they feel almost like ice. So what we're gonna do today is take the shovel, kind of put it around the edges until it lifts up, and then once it's up, you can grab the brick. Oh, and that is actually super heavy. I could get in a good squat set. And then after you're done with the squats, we're gonna take it over to the igloo. At the igloo, we're gonna build these up in a spiral all the way into a dome. So we're just gonna take it each time and set it right here. For the first couple layers, it's just gonna be completely flat. And then after about the third layer, we're gonna kinda smooth it in and you'll see later. But for right now, our job is to just make a few more spirals of these blocks. Let's get to work. always gonna be a few bricks in your pile that just don't end up right. They're just kind of come up weird. And that was the case with this one right here. You can see it kind of fell apart at the bottom. And when that happens, you're saying use these to fill in the holes in your circles where it doesn't require an entire brick, but just a tiny piece. So with this guy, I'm actually just gonna chop it in half. And now let's take a piece like this and go over to the igloo. So where I finished the row, right here, an entire brick wouldn't fit. So I'm just gonna take this guy and kind of stuff it in there just like so and boom we have that whole row complete all right so in some of these spots right here you'll see that there's pretty big gaps so all i'm gonna do is just kind of get some random snow lying around with my shovel and just kind of use that to fill in the gaps and then you can just use extra snow to kind of pack around that and seal it I got two updates for you guys. First update is it's like 40 degrees now, which by Wyoming standards is t-shirt weather. Second update I have for you guys is we finished the third layer of the igloo. Dude, did you ever play Club Penguin growing up? No. Really? You had no life. <laughs> Cause, that? All right, this looks just like Club... You don't know what Club Penguin is? No. It's like this game where you're all these like penguins that live in igloos what? that look just like this. You had no childhood if you didn't play Club Penguin. I am all done making this level right here nice and smooth and ready for the next layer. The problem is this thing is pretty tall and Despite being six foot three, it is pretty hard for me to get out. So uh, let's do my best high jump. I'm going to be so mad at myself if I mess up this wall. I will be too. Isaac will be too. Here we go. Oh. <gasps> Made it. Woo! Kobe.
Honestly, we're kind of worried right now because we do have quite a bit more to build and we do not have many bricks left. We'll see, if it doesn't work, we'll have to make a few more, but we're gonna, we're gonna make this igloo happen. Oh, yeah. So, let's get it. Shave in there? Shaving. You using your uh, Gillette? <laughs> Gillette shovel. Hashtag not sponsored. We're now up to four layers of igloo, which means it's getting up there. It also means we can no longer step or jump over this without breaking something. So it's time to build the entrance. I'm gonna try to make this entrance as small as possible. It doesn't have too much structural integrity yet. All right, we are now through, and that is just big enough for us to get through. <laughs> Isaac's stuck. He built this hole. Here, I'm gonna have to, here, I'll make it bigger so okay. Isaac can get here, it. Oh, here, here he goes, here he goes. Yeah! Wow, look at that. Dude, you look like some kind of little gopher popping up out of the hole. <laughs> Got the shovel, you just go BAM as it pop up. I barely fit my dump truck through that hole back there. I finally got out. <laughs> Isaac is dummy thick. So I think the best idea would be for you to just hand them over and I'll get in there and keep assembling them. The steeper the angle, the harder it is to keep them up. So I'll need to be even more careful with my geometry. So this row of bricks right here is proving to be the absolute hardest because it's at an angle where if you let go, they will fall. Once it's done, they'll hold themselves together, but it's not at the moment. Once we get to the next row, it'll be more manageable, but Isaac has to um, hand me bricks. So right now we have my tripod here that's gonna hold this up and I'm gonna keep going. So we'll let you guys know how that goes. We just finished the highest layer. That's gonna be really hard because from here on, I can kind of manage it on both sides and it makes it a little bit easier. So I'm really happy we have this layer done. Now this is starting to look dope. Isaac is sliding them bricks in like he slides into them DMs. All right, so I just slid in the last like four or five blocks inside the igloo. So that way me and David can both be inside and kind of prop the last few up to finish it off, baby. Let's finish her up. This is what trying to put the last few blocks on the igloo looks like. This is the moment of truth. He's gonna let go. All right, let's see it, let's see it, let go. But we did it. We finally finished the structure of the dome and it looks dope. So the next step in the process is I'm going to take this shovel and kind of make the entrance a little bit bigger, make a nice, good entrance tunnel. And then once that's up, we're gonna bring some bricks over here and line them out here and up and around to make kind of an entrance tunnel because tunnels are dope. So the tunnel is now done. Um, it looks a little bit rough. We just need to go through and fill in some of these holes just in time for this beautiful sunset.
We built a fire in it that night and caught sunrise the next morning, and my dream of building an igloo in front of the Grand Tetons had finally become a reality. It might seem kind of stupid to put so much effort and time into something that'll come crumbling to the ground within a few weeks, but to us, it was all worth it. What made it especially worthwhile for us was seeing how much other people loved it. For weeks following, it was so awesome to see so many people tagging us on Instagram stories and taking amazing photos at it. This is so cool! So yeah, that's the story of our little igloo in the Grand Tetons. Maybe we'll have to do another one next year. <laughs>